everybody, Bullets for Freedom of Liberty here. Happy New Year 2018 is finally here. Uh, just got off the live video that Full Lead Taco and Load to Bacon were doing. That was a lot of fun to watch you guys. Uh, thanks for doing that. I um, want to give a special shout out to uh, uh, the Full Lead Taco and, and Load to Bacon and West Desert Shooter and Elvis Ammo. Uh, Johnny's Reloading Bench saw Johnny on there earlier tonight. Uh, guys, I can't thank you all enough for allowing freedom for bullets for freedom and liberty uh, to join this little happy band of casting reloading and uh, shooting group or whatever you want to call it it's been a lot of fun i've learned so much from you guys um this last year and i just can't thank y'all enough um you know full lead taco if it wasn't for you i wouldn't have uh picked up the uh lyman mag 25 um again i put the, the little power switch on uh, to make that a little easier, um, but uh, you know they were. You guys were talking about the different uh, uh, reloading setups, and it was funny you brought up Dylan. Um, I've actually got two Super 1050s sitting in storage because I'm saving up my money right now for the Mach 7s uh, to integrate those. Um, I've uh, compiled enough brass over the last uh, 15 to 17 years um, that I've literally been over on the the brass side. Uh, the prep center, um, cutting and resizing and creating my own 300 blackout brass. And I'm, I want to try to speed that up a little bit. So I'm um, working on some things with Mach 7 for uh, 2018. I'm hoping to have that done by midsummer. But what I wanted to share with you guys, um, I've been doing some powder coating on my uh, modified Lee. Um, I did a bunch of casting over the weekend. Uh, these, this is the uh, hollow point 175 grain, uh, 40 Smith and Wesson. Um, just got done. I've got a batch in the uh, in the in the oven right now um, of the uh, raspberry starburst by Powder by the Pound, and it's turned out to be okay. It's a two coat uh, two coat powder coat, um, but uh, you know so far it's I think it's going to be okay. I don't know where these raspberry berry colors are coming from, um, but I did have a good luck with the mirror green, and I definitely had good luck with the uh, uh, the the black. So thanks to my Lyman Mag 25 this weekend. I was able to cast up uh, about, well, there's 750, almost 1,000 9mm. These are those 120 grain uh, modified Lee by Hollow Point Bullet Mold. So there's about 750 in this bucket. I powder coated another 6, 700 in here. I'm getting ready to load. I, uh, I cast up 1,500 of the... 230 grain missiles that Ellis Ammo calls missiles. Um, I still have half a bucket left. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So I, I powder coated those and I ended up over the weekend, pull these out. I set up the reloading press. And as you can see here, let me see if I can do this. There we go. So, uh, sorry guys. So, 350 and 350 here are the the mirror black well, let me get my camera back here so you can actually see this so here is the uh, the mirror black and 300 blackout here is that uh, garnet candy red which basically it's more of a chrome um, here is the uh, the neon green and the metallic blue and yeah, I got a whole bunch. I mean, I just cast a bunch of different colors yesterday. Hell, I even took some of the uh, neon, Springfield neon yellow and sprinkled some black on it. So I was able to successfully do about 750, yeah, uh, 700 rounds of 300 blackout. But I want to share this real quick. So I was going through my stockpile. And would you look at this? This is the very first set of... of cast lead that I did almost a year ago. That's the 124 grain truncated cone by Lee off the six cavity mold and Harbor Freight Red. Harbor Freight Red. And look at that. Two coats of Harbor Freight White. And then I got to pull remembering that I had the Columbia River Blue. So I did 709 millimeter in red, white, and blue yesterday. I got those done about eight o'clock last night. So, yep. Yeah, so I'm going to start shooting these um, probably Wednesday night. 
But I wanted to share, this is something very special. I wanted to share this with you all. Just got this back and I'll make this quick because I know we want to get into the actual shooting video. This was done by my friend Adam at the range. He Cerakoted, he took my Glock 35 that I converted over to a 9mm um, for competition so I can put the Lone Wolf compensator on. Um, Randy at the range cut in a couple extra windows. There's the original stock. There is the one side. You can see the serrations. Let's see if I can get it in the light. There it is, serrations and serrations on the back. Put the Vortex scope on. Um, he Cerakoted my uh, Magwell. And I did the stipling on this a while ago. Um, I'll post the before and after pictures on it. But uh, shoot me a message if you want more information on the amazing work that Adam and Randy have done uh, with the CNC machines and the Cerakoting. Um, this thing is just amazing. So uh, without further ado on that, I'm going to introduce the main project. Here we go. So this, my friends is the 300 blackout that I built by Palmetto Arms. It's a Palmetto Arms lower, it's a Palmetto Arms upper with a nickel boron. And you can see that was shiny, but uh, I fired 1,200 rounds through this so far um, without a single jam. Um, even when I was doing the load development um, for the 300 blackout, I've shot over 1,200 cast lead. This has only seen 25 rounds of factory ammo since I built it. And since then, I've put over 1,200 rounds of the cast lead 230 grain um, uh, missiles that Elvis Ammo calls a missile. Uh, this is an 8.5 inch barrel. And yes, that is, let's see if I can get the light in there. There it is. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, there it is. There's the push button for the flashlight. So this is one of those flashlight suppressors. Make sure that if you do build these, do your own research. Make sure that you either have a gun trust or your Form 1 on file. Um, the nice thing about the mag lights, they have serial numbers so you can register it and do all that other fun stuff. Guys, this suppressor, is, we were shooting it side by side, not just with the 22, it was quieter than the Ruger Takedown 22 long rifle. Uh, we were shooting in an indoor range, um, and I'll show that video here in just a second. But uh, it's done really well, very impressed with it. So um, just your basic build. I have a lot of fun shooting this. Um, I've got, like I said, this is 1,200 rounds through a nickel boron, and I'm loving it. So um, I'm hoping to get some more video shooting of this uh, here coming up, but I've got about a four and a half minute video that I just finished editing. Um, but I wanted just to, uh, I haven't posted a video for a while, I apologize. you got holidays and birthdays and all the other stuff that happens during this time of year. I just wanted to say thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. Um, we're over 150 subscribers now, which I really appreciate that, you guys. Thank you very much. Um, I've got another batch of the 40 Smith & Wesson coming out right now. And uh, so, you know, guys, I can't thank you enough. I can't thank, uh, can't thank you enough for allowing me to um, take the time out of my day to create these videos. And, and if it wasn't for the, for the guys like Full Lead Taco and Loads of Bacon and and Elvis Ammo and uh, Johnny's Reloading Bench. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't have done any of this. Um, I've learned so much from them. I know you can too. Go check out their sites if you haven't already. But uh, I've got a uh, second coat of the uh, purple or the raspberry, and that's going into the water quench real quick to get that cooled off. And I'll get those sized up and uh, ready to go. So guys, I hope you have an amazing 2018. I appreciate you all tuning in. If you like what you see, click like, click subscribe. I'm not asking for any money or anything like that. I just do this because I, I love it. So without further ado, enjoy this next video. It's pretty quick and it does get loud because the guy next to me in the, in the indoor range was, uh, I think he was shooting a 357 or something. But um, I just want to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. And um, look forward to shooting with you in 2018. So remember, arm yourself, educate yourself, and for God's sakes, defend yourself. And just once again, thank God that Hillary Clinton is not our president, you guys. Appreciate your time. You have an amazing year, and we'll see you soon. So as most of you know, we've been uh, doing the 300 blackout in, in 230 grain cast lead. Uh, these are what Elvis Ammo calls the, the, the missiles. So we've just got various colors. Um, I've ran about a thousand rounds through here. 
Um, I've got 10 grains of IMR 4227 and I'm shooting right at 1,050 feet per second. So these are truly subsonic and so far I've had no, no issues. Um, I've been reloading with the Lee, using the Lee factory crimp die. Um, just standard reloading procedures, nothing major. Uh, but let's go ahead and, and I'll give you, a, give you a shout because out of all the videos I've seen on the 300 blackout, I have yet to see anybody use the cast lead through a suppressor built out of the flashlight or the solvent trap or whatever. Um, don't forget that the solvent trap or the, the cans, you have to have your F1 or inside of a gun truss. So um, with the double tap trigger, check your local uh, state regulations on whether the double tap trigger is legal. But we're gonna go ahead and do a couple uh, multi-round multi bursts. I'm gonna do this, try to do this without any editing here. We're gonna set it out about about 20 yards. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a try. Ears on. Okay, here we go. So that was the double tap trigger. Let's load a bigger magazine and, and see how fast we can take it. All right, guys. So I'm I have the camera on the other side now. I'm gonna go ahead, load up six to eight rounds. Okay, 230 grain cast lead. Over 10 grains of IMR 4227. If I'm yelling, I'm in the range and I got my hearing on. But these are these are suppressed rounds. Yeah. Here we go. So, not too shabby guys so this entire build I'm not even in at 700 bucks this is a palmetto arms upper and lower this is the double tap trigger uh, mil spec double tap trigger that came out of double tap trigger.com they're not sponsors this can I built for $68. Um, you can do your own research on finding where you can get your baffles and so on and so forth. But 230 grain missiles, guys. 10 grains IM 4227. And uh, just reloading procedures. So let's go back to shoot some more. Here we go. So one thing that I found with the double tap trigger, chamber is clear. So what I found with the double tap trigger is, is that every time you pull it back, it fires. Every time you release it, it fires. The difference between the double tap trigger and the other binaries that are out there is that there is no third, there is no third, let me move the camera around so my, my rifle is down range. There is no third setting. So when you're in the middle of, of a firing action, you have to realize that you have to release that trigger. So for some people that, that aren't really familiar with the trigger, it makes it a little diff difficult. So with that binary system that are out there with the higher, higher priced, with the higher priced uh, uh, binaries, that extra selector switch can come in handy. So if you have any questions, comments, editorial, let me know and uh, look forward to talking with you soon. Have a great day, guys. Enjoy.